Hi, I'm Nico Simon, and uh, this is the Ricoh Theta 360. Uh, I got this a week ago, pretty much as soon as I heard that YouTube announced its new YouTube 360 degree video format, and now I've been using it for a week, I thought I'd share with you some thoughts on it, do a bit of a review. Boom! So there it is, that is the Ricoh th 360, the th Ricoh Theta 360. Um, so I got this as soon as I, I heard that this video format came out that would be basically like a video version of Street View that YouTube was offering on YouTube but only in Google Chrome uh, as a browser. Um, I looked at what are the video cameras that you can do this with and the only video camera that is on the market right now that's easily available is this, this Ricoh camera which has been around for about a year now but they recently updated the firmware to allow it to shoot short, to shoot short video clips uh, of about uh, th up to three minutes in length. Um, which are compatible with this new uh, format on YouTube. Um, so I rushed out and I got this and I started shooting clips. I've been posting clips all week, in fact. I've shot some more and posted some more clips tonight. Um, in fact, I think they're the best ones. I took some of you uh, at uh, Yasukuni Shrine the other day, which were very good, and I took um, a couple bicycling around to and from there, um, which I also posted. Uh, or I'm going to post with this video that you can see. I think those actually look the best and they show really the potential of this. One is a uh, a video blogging, like a travel uh, video blogging uh, camera and video format, and the other is a kind of an action camera format. Um, you know, I can very easily see this as being something that GoPro is going to try to make a version of, um, and something that I think is going to become like a real standard for people. If you want to do a travel video, um, you're going to have to do 360 degree videos. You're going to have the presenter, but you're going to be able to have everyone else also be able to watch and soak in all the atmosphere all around, and you feel like they're in the place with the travel presenter. Um, I, I felt that immediately with this. So first impressions are uh, using it, it's super light. It's only 95 grams. It's also very, very simple to operate. It's only got one button to record and stop. Um, it's only got two buttons on the side for operation. If you power it up normally with the power button, uh, it takes photos. If you power it on by pressing the Wi-Fi button and the power button at the same time, um, it shoots video. You can connect it with a wi with, with an Android or iOS app where you can have more subtle controls and that's the normal way that you control it. You can control things like exposure, you can use it as a remote um, to shoot. Um, and uh, very, very easy to use. I found the best way to use it is to hold this a long way out in front or even, uh, this actually good, went and made me go get a selfie stick to shoot with because, uh, you know, you want a bit of distance so you can soak in everything and that your body isn't taking up all the, all the, the screen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's light, it's only 95 grams, um, very simple, very easy to operate. And it, it shoots and it's the first camera to shoot in, in a brand new revolutionary video format that I'm convinced is going to be pretty big, especially when you get all these VR headsets come out later this year. I don't think this is going to be like another 3D, you know, camera format. Um, so the downsides of this, what are the limitations of this at the moment? There are a lot of limitations with this right now. First of all, with the camera itself, um, it does only shoot uh, up to three minutes at the moment. This was designed as a photo camera, and it was the video was enabled through a firmware upgrade. It has a three minute limit probably because uh, it heats up. I mean, it, it has to shoot in HD to take in so much video um, of everything all around, and uh, so it is time limited to three minutes. That said, I, I think that's okay. In fact, I actually appreciate the discipline that it makes me keep blogs to three minutes. Um, other than that, yeah, it's uh, it, it cannot Wi-Fi transfer the video at the moment. You have to do that through USB. At least that's what I'm finding. Um, so to view it, you have to go home to your computer. Um, the format itself, the YouTube format, which this is compatible with, um, cannot be edited. You can't stitch video clips together, you can't trim them, you can't put music over the top of them, which is a pretty big limitation, and that's what I want to do most with this. Um, there is There again, it's only been out for a week. So I am waiting eagerly for, to hear information, one about getting compatible uh, video editors for this out, uh, including the YouTube video editor. It's not compatible with this, even though it's a YouTube format. So hopefully that's going to be fixed soon, or at least have some scripts and some, some ability to edit this in Adobe Premiere, for example. Another limitation is that you have to watch this uh, to see the video with the proper effect. You have to view the video on YouTube in the Google Chrome browser. Um, if you don't, you see the full video kind of all stretched and all weird. Uh, it actually does look kind of cool. And that brings me to the final, maybe biggest limitation at the moment that everyone's first impression of this is, which is that um, it looks really terrible resolution. The reason is, is that and they get confused because it says it's a 1080p video, but it looks crap. It looks like a 360p or a 240p video. 
And the reason for that is, is that this shoots a 1080p video, but everything is a 1080p video. <laughs> so you're zoomed in on one part of the video, looking at only a 240 or 360p version at a time. So to look, to have it look like it's an HD video, like a 720p or a 1080p on, on one part of the screen at a time, um, it really needs to be 4K or 8K, ultimately. And I'm guessing that's where this is obviously going to go. And this is going to justify all of these huge, you know, graphics processing capability that are going into um, PCs and so on. Which reminds me of one other limitation of this camera. Um, there's no external memory slot for this. It's got three gigabytes internal storage and you have to transfer by USB if you're using video. You can do wireless, wirelessly for photos. Um, it's a first generation product. This is a first generation video format. It's only been out for uh, about a week. You can see the clips I've shot with this um, and they look really, really amazing. You get, you, you see why I think this is, uh, this is gonna be something pretty big, especially with VR coming out later this year, you know, in earnest commercially. Um, I'm, I think this is awesome. And you know, I think for the Hanami, this is gonna be really awesome. I'm gonna shoot clips with that next Saturday. And um, yeah, I think uh, this, this kind of thing, this is still first generation. I think these are gonna get a lot better a lot more sophisticated and um, I think this is going to be something pretty awesome for someone who video blogs in Japan. So uh, check it out, that is the Rico Theta 360. Um, very happy with it so far and um, I think this is the future, seriously, I think this is going to be a big thing. Uh, this cost me 300 US dollars, uh, some uh, Nissan, up a big camera and I'm happy with it, I'm happy with it. For all its limitations, it is very much a first generation product, but I think it's, it's good, and if you wanna try something new like the videos I'm shooting, go get it. Peace.